There it goes. Okay. Um, so it says in the figure, AB is parallel to CD. So looking at this, we got AB is parallel to CD. And then BC is parallel to AD right here. So washed out. Can you see it from your perspective? It's really washed out from my... This is this. Okay. okay, and then it says that the measure of ABD is this. So I'm going to look. ABD would be this angle right here, and it's 3x plus 4. I'm going to write that down. And then it says angle BCD is 6x minus 8. So BCD is this angle right here is 6x minus 8. And I'm lining it up on purpose. And then using another color, um, EDF, EDF right here is 7x minus 20. Okay. Um, so it asks for the measure of BCD. BCD is this one, the 6x minus 8. So once we find x, we need to plug it into this to find that angle measure. But how are we going to find x? So you have to figure out how all these angles are related. Um, there's a couple different ways, but um, with these being parallel, like these are corresponding angles, and this would equal this. And then this angle is corresponding with this one, so this would equal this. And then what you have is three angles that form a straight line, so those three angles are supplementary, um, and they add to 180. So we can add these together and put them equal to 180. So adding this 3x plus 6x plus 7x, 9 plus 7 is 16x. And then negative 20 plus negative 8 would be negative 28, plus 4 is negative 24, and then we just solve for x. And 16x equals 204, divide by 16, and x equals 12.75. Decimal fun. Then once we have x equals 12.75, Remember, we're trying to find the measure of angle BCD, which is 6x minus 8. We can take the x and just plug it in. So 6 times 12.75 minus 8 comes out to 68.5 degrees. So we get 68.5 degrees. You wouldn't type in degrees, just 68.5, by the way. That was fun, y'all. Um, another way to look at it is, like, I showed the three angles making a straight line right there. But you could also realize, like, um, we have the triangle here. And opposite angles, or, like, vertical angles are equal, so this equals this. And then we have a parallelogram right here, and opposite angles in a parallelogram are equal. So also the three angles, sorry, three angles of the triangle... Um, equal 182, so you could look at it that way. So yeah, that was fun. Okay. Next one's easy. The next one, it shows you um, three-dimensional shapes, and you just have to identify what shapes are in it. So for this one, I see a cone, and then the base of this building here is a cylinder. And then for this building here, we have cylinders here and then a rectangular prism. So a cylinder and a rectangular prism. And then for this shape, it's hard to tell because it's not in color. Um, but the top here is a pyramid. So it'd be pyramid. And then again, you can't see it, but there is a cone right here. I know you can't see it because it's not in color. And then a cylinder right there. And then the building, it would be a rectangular prism. So a cone looks like this, a cylinder circle on the top and the bottom. Pyramid would be like this with a square or a triangular base normally. And then a rectangular prism would be like a tissue box. So yeah.
Okay. Yes. Next one. Okay, so for this one, it says, in the diagram shown, chords A, B, and C, D intersect at point E. Um, the measure of AC is 120, and they show it in the picture, which is nice. The measure of DB is 2X, and the measure of AEC is 4X. It wants the degree of AED, so we want the degree of this angle here. Um, so to find this degree, like the average of these two arcs is this angle here. So we have to add those together, divide by 2 to get this angle. And then once we do that, we can find this one because it's supplementary to that. So we need to find x. So 120 plus 2x divided by 2 would give us the average, which equals this angle here, 4x. Okay, so we're finding the average of these two arcs to find this, and that'll help us solve for x. So multiply both sides by 2. We get 120 plus 2x equals 8x. Subtract 2x from both sides. 120 equals 6x. Divide by 6 and you get x equals 20. However, we don't necessarily need the value of, or, well, that's not the final answer. So we need to find this angle, which is supplementary to this. This says 4x, so 4 times 20 would be 80 degrees for this angle. And then to find this one, we just do 180 minus 80, which is 100 degrees. So in this box, you just type 100. You don't type degrees or anything. And then this is what it'll look like on the screen. You can either click the boxes or type on the keyboard, whatever works. Then the next one. Um, Kyle defines a circle as a set of all the points equidistant from a given point. Explain why Kyle's definition is not precise enough. So if we have a given point and all the points equidistant from that point, sounds like a circle, but he doesn't specify whether it's in like a 2D space. So it could be the definition for a sphere. So um, all the points equidistant from a given point would be for a sphere, not a circle. So that would be the answer here. Um, I haven't seen any questions that you have to type into on the newer version of the EOC, but I guess you never know, especially with AI and everything. And the concepts could still show up in a different format because the definition is true for a sphere. And he needs to be more specific by saying like in a 2D space or on a plane. So he should be more, or actually he should specify that the set of points is in a plane or like 2D space. The answer key said just this top part, so I guess you wouldn't necessarily have to go into more specifics, or you could do like one or the other. If you have to type in, I don't think you'll have to type in, but they could like put this in multiple choice or something like that. Okay. How are you feeling so far? In there? Good? Too much? Too little? I don't know. Anyways, next one. Um, Next one, it says, choose the correct equation or phrase to fill in each blank in the paragraph. For each blank, fill in a bubble before the equation phrase. That is correct. Okay, so it says the vertices of SRT are right here. I'm reflecting across the line blank and across the line blank. So we're doing two reflections across two lines. Is the same as a translation, four units to the right and four units up because the lines are blank. Okay, so um, first we're going to translate the shape. So then we can match the reflection with the translation that they stated. So I'm going to translate my shape four units to the right and four units. So for each point, four units to the right, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we got S double prime. And one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. T double prime and one, two, three, four. I put double prime because there's actually going to be a shape in between. So that's like the final. 
And of course, this would be on a computer screen, so you might want to put it on paper if you're trying to like do all this. Okay, so we need to figure out which two lines this shape is reflected over to get into this position. Um, so you could kind of do some guess and check with the lines. A line of x equals 4 would just be a vertical line at x equals 4, or a line of y equals 6 would just be a vertical line, or I mean a horizontal line at y equals 6. Um, just to save some time and energy, the answer is actually, the first one is D. It's this one. Um, so I'm going to graph this line. Remember to graph the y-intercept at 6, and then the slope is negative 1. So y-intercept is at 6, and then slope of negative 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, like this. And then you can use your ID or um, like scratch paper, your scratch paper for the test to graph a line. It might be helpful to wear your ID on test day because you can use it as a straight edge. And then if we were to reflect this, over the line, do you guys have the line drawn already? Okay, so to reflect this over the line, all these points need to be the same distance on the other side. But since this line is like on a diagonal, you're counting diagonals. So this is half a diagonal away. So put it half a diagonal away on the other side. This one is across like a diagonal. So put it one diagonal away over here. And then this one's one diagonal away. So put it one diagonal over here. And then connect your dots. So this would be S prime, T prime, and R prime. And then the second answer is C. So this is D, this is C. And the equation for C is y-intercept at 10 and the slope is negative 1. So y-intercept at 10 and the slope is negative 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, like this. And then graph the line. So then these coordinates should be reflect over onto these, and you can kind of check that. This is one and a half diagonals, so one and a half diagonals away is this. This is one diagonal this way, one diagonal that way, one here, one here. Okay, and there is our reflected shape. So then for this, um, so this reflection over these two lines is the same as a translation four units to the right and four units up because the lines are, they're not congruent, they are parallel. They aren't perpendicular. They aren't similar. Parallel is the only thing that makes sense. There was a theorem at some point that relates to this, and the theorem, I'll just show you. I'm going to write it aloud. Let's see, where did I? It was something like this. Um, reflecting over two parallel lines is the same as a translation, um, so it kind of stems from that, and if you remembered that, it could help you narrow this down, but guess and check works too. Feel smarter already? Okay, the next one's a little bit easier, just the format's weird. Okay, next. Um, for this, Johnny wants to find the equation of a circle with the center at 3, negative 4, and a radius of 7. He uses the argument shown. Choose the correct word or phrase to fill in each blank in the argument. For each blank, fill in the bubble before the word or phrase that is correct. Okay, so equation of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals the radius squared. Um, this is your horizontal change, and then this is your vertical, which is important for this problem. I'm going to plug in the center into this equation, so it would be x minus 3 squared, and then our y is negative 4, so it would be y plus 4, because remember, subtracting a negative just turns positive, then we got 7 squared, or 49, however you want to write it there. So now that we've filled it into the equation, um, let xy be any point on the circle, then the horizontal distance from xy to the center is x minus 3. You're just grabbing it from the equation. And then the vertical distance would be y plus 4. The total distance from xy to the center of the radius of the circle is 7. The blank can now be used to create an equation that shows the relationship between horizontal, vertical, and total distance. Um, when we were learning about the equation of a circle, I mentioned that it is similar to the Pythagorean theorem. It's a 
derivative of it. Um, so that's what they're getting at here. But if you didn't know that, you could just consider the formulas. Like perimeter of what? Like a rectangle would be like length plus width plus length plus width. That doesn't really look like that at all. Um, Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's definitely that format, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And then quadratic formula you may remember from algebra is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac. And that doesn't look like that at all. So it's not that, it's Pythagorean theorem. We're going to do one more together and then we'll start homework. Okay, next for this one here, it's a proof, as you can see. Um, the, the thing is with the proofs though, they don't often ask for every little blank. Um, so here it's just asking for line three of the proof, so we're only gonna focus on line three, but obviously we'll have to consider the other parts too. Um, and then here are like statements and reasons to choose from. It says, given that PQRS is a parallelogram, and PQ is congruent to QR, it wants us to prove that this is a rhombus. Well, in a parallelogram, opposite sides are equal. So if these two sides are equal and opposite sides are equal, then we can prove it's a rhombus because all the sides would be the same. So the two parts, the first two parts are given, that would just be these two statements. And then the third, we'd want to say that, okay, PS is equal to QR because opposite sides are equal. Um, so here it says PQ is equal to SR and PS is equal to QR. So it would be, this would be the statement that would go in part three. And then the reason is because opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent and that would go here. And it only asks for blank three. So at that point, you'd be done. Okay, so now your to-do list is these two things. Um, you have homework number three on Schoology. I'd recommend doing the homework first. And then you're going to fill in um, page two using the video. So um, the whole thing for this week, we're going to do, can you be quiet, please? Hey, wait, don't get up. Each day, I'll teach, Samuel, I'm talking, teach one page, and then you'll use the video to fill in the second page. I'll teach this page tomorrow. We'll use the video for four and so on. Um, so that'll be our general routine. So go ahead and grab a laptop, start the homework and fill in page two if you have time. Really Alex, please don't. Richard. No, no, Richard. I'm really glad you're getting Richard. Richard, get 19. Oh, wait, no, oh. Um, grab your numbered laptop. If it's in the wrong space, still grab your numbered laptop. Oh. 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 Anybody see the mouse on my phone? Richard. Nah, go, bro. You gotta go, Chris. Richard, bro. Chris, don't get them. Yeah, why? Why'd you take them off? Please, Why? 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 Why?